Hello, and welcome to another episode of Domversations. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Welcome back. So happy to have you here. Um, today's guest is Karen Maloney. She is a life coach, and she has like 5 million other credentials. She also has a a podcast of her own that's called Curiosity and Consciousness. Um, it sounds deep, guys, but it's not. It's actually very easy to comprehend. Um, we're going to talk about intuition, listening to yourself, and how to create your own reality. We all are in the driver's seat, but we just don't realize it. Um, so I hope you guys get as much out of it as I did. And she has a glorious accent. Her voice, oh my gosh, she could just be on there saying the alphabet for an hour and I would listen. Anyway, um, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can send me an email at donversations at gmail.com or on any of the socials. I'm there, Donversations Podcast. So I'd love to hear from you. And here we go. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I am so glad that you have a podcast because I have been binge listening to so many episodes. You're so sweet. <laughs> oh, well, first, your voice. Oh, my gosh. You have such a beautiful voice. Aww. I love the accent. Why are you in Mexico? What made you go to Mexico from Ireland? Well, um, my intuition. Really? November 2019, I had this Mexico was all up in my energy. It was like, I need to move to Mexico now. And I, I've been trusting my intuition all my life. So I know the feeling, but I still had that human mind that was like, what the hell is happening? Where is this coming from? <laughs> Why am I going to Mexico? This is insane. But I knew to trust. I was like, okay, these are just thoughts. It's all good. And I only booked my flight to January 2020. And at first I was looking at dates for like May, June, July, you know, to give my mind yeah. time to acclimatize. And I just kept having this feeling or hearing this voice. And I was like, no, it has to be January or February. It has to be January or February. So I was like, okay. And I booked flights and left a couple of weeks later. And wow. it's funny, I knew it wasn't a holiday, but also I knew, I, I didn't know how long. Like I knew I had to go there, live here for a while, but I had no idea how long. So saying goodbye to family and friends, I was like, uh, don't know when I'll be back. Could be back in a month. <laughs> could be back in six. Could be back in 10 years. I have no idea, but I need to go. And two and a half years later, I'm still here and I love it. And I am so grateful because I would have suffered so bad in Ireland with the pandemic. Such a crazy yeah. situation. Um, did your family think you were crazy? Well, you know, maybe, but I, <laughs> it's not the first time that I've done something that seems seemingly like out of this world insane. And it's funny, like, even when I look back, I can see I've always been curious and done things differently. And my mother has always been so incredible. And even from a young age has trusted me to trust myself. You know, even if they don't understand, they're like, Okay. So no, they're super supportive. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, yeah. it really is. Cause a lot of the times um, I, I think parents can just come on, quit being goofy. You know, that's just your imagination yeah. or whatever. Totally. So have you, you always been intuitive or um, been a deep thinker? Um, now I can look back and say, yes, but I didn't realize that at the time. And I certainly didn't have that word intuitive right but uh, yeah I even say to some people I was like wow I was definitely on a lifelong spiritual awakening from a very young age but I had no idea what was happening or why but I was always kind of the black sheep I always thought differently I always questioned and I was like well why why do I have to do things that everyone else does why do I have to go to mass every Sunday why do I have to fall into this school curriculum and like you know my final exams before university it's done on like a point system in Ireland and I just couldn't understand it. It wasn't that I was really rebellious. I was just trying to really understand. I was like, I don't get it. How can what I write in a set time in an exam that some random stranger is going to correct, they could be having a good day or a bad day and all these collated points can determine what I can and can't do with my life. I was like, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me how this can determine what career or possibilities I have I was like 
doesn't make any sense, you know? So I suppose I always had that curiosity. Yeah, that's some big <laughs> thinking there. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it for me, it just seems so logical. I was like, why? And I used to talk to my mother and she was like, it's just the way it is. And I'm like, yeah, and that's fine. I'll do it. But I'm also not going to put all my eggs in that basket. basket. I don't care too much. I'm not going to like lose out of my life and study nine to five and really kind of, yeah, spend a lot of time studying. I was like, I'll do them. But if for any reason I fail them all, I was like, there's absolutely no way in the world I'm repeating. I was like, I don't care if I fail everything. I'm not repeating. And my fallback plan, my mother used to work in the bank. I was like, mom, my fallback plan is I will work in the bank, but I'll work my way to the top. I won't just stay like <laughs> on the teller like you did. And she was like, oh, that was the only time she'd say that. And she was like, oh, please just don't go to the bank. Do anything else. <laughs> Um, but I was like, mom, this is fine. This is my plan, you know? So, so yeah. uh, what, okay. So when did you start delving into actually like becoming a life coach and stuff? When did that happen? Mm, so again, because I was always a bit of a black sheep and this deep thinker, like books were my thing. And I was such a big reader and I, I didn't, and still to this day, I don't like reading fiction. I love to read nonfiction. I want to read books that I learn something, especially if I can learn something about me or how we think or why we do what we do. So, but it was like my little secret, you know, I didn't share it with anyone because it was kind of like, for me, there was something in them, but most people didn't like reading them. So I was like, okay, I just won't talk about them and kind of spirituality and religion and all that kind of thing so that was always there but that doesn't mean like I wasn't living it I understood it and intellectually it all made sense I was like yeah makes a lot of sense I get it I understand it mm -hmm. but I had no kind of practice I wasn't living it so I wasn't really experiencing the benefits I still had and I had a lot of inner conflict because of the fact that I had this kind of now I can call it awakening and I was very intuitive, but yet I was really trying to fit in and tick the boxes, you know, even though I say I was a deep thinker and I questioned things a lot that also left me with the question of why, why do I feel different to everyone else? You know, I didn't want to be like them, but also I was trying to because I thought, well, this is the way we're meant to be. So what's wrong with me? Why am I not? wanting or following the same path so it left me with a lot of inner conflict and you know again what we carry within is what we experience so through different experiences and different experiences from childhood I especially in relationships I really did not feel super confident or like I was good enough and I had this idea of in order for me to feel valid I had to do things or I had to achieve. And that was kind of across the board. But even in love as well, I felt like I had to be the overgiver and the fixer in order to receive love. So obviously, and I, you know, I was unconscious to all of this at the time, but right. obviously having that inner belief that I wasn't aware of, I really wasn't attracting the best relationships either. And it was through a traumatic breakup that I really started walking my talk. I really started going, okay, Karen, here we are. I am the common denominator in my life. Why do certain situations keep happening? Or why, no matter what I'm doing, do I still feel kind of not good enough? Or like there's something missing? Or I need something to make me feel worthy or valid? So that's when I really yeah, I started walking my talk and putting everything into practice that I had read all these years that I understood intellectually, but again, was not living. So yeah, and it was through that as well that I really, I really opened my mind to the fact that no matter what happens, I still have a choice. And this breakup my ex sent me an email and basically disappeared and I never heard from him again and I lost oh everything <laughs> I lost everything I owned because we were living abroad and he wasn't from Ireland and said he had gone back to his home country so it was like traumatic it was literally one day to the next massive shock and Whoa. instantly yeah you know I wouldn't wish it on anyone but again it is what it is and I don't agree with what he did 
but also I'm grateful for me and the way that I responded. And I realized and just had so much clarity that, oh my God, I am with me my whole entire life. So that means no matter what happens around me and no matter what happens outside of me, no matter what other people do, I still have a choice in how I feel inside. I can still live my life and be happy and I don't have to feel crap and like a victim because of someone else's circumstances. And I really started going deep on the inner work in looking at my own limiting beliefs. What did I say to myself internally that I wasn't really aware of? How and why did I feel like I wasn't good enough? And it's through my own inner transformations and how much I have changed and evolved and how different and free and incredible and light and love filled I feel on the inside that I was like, I need to share this with people. Like it is that's possible amazing. to change no matter what. So that's part of that's the- That's amazing. I love that story. That is so incredible. And the fact that you want to share it, I think that people just get so wrapped up in themselves. They don't mm-hmm. think about how can this help somebody else? Um, yeah. And it's funny because it's nearly like, I felt like I got a secret to life that I'm like, I can't do anything else but share it. And it's this realization as well of we're here to serve. And again, it's not from serving from a, like I used to, like a martyrdom sense of thing, like, ooh, to my own detriment, I need to be the fixer and be there for everyone. No, not that kind of service. The service of when we connect to the truth of ourselves and the wholeness and the gift that life is and the possibilities that exist for us and the power we have to think and create our own reality no matter what is happening I'm like that's the gold because and again it's not to say to live like a hermit and not enjoy the fruits of life no have what you want go for the big dreams have all the luxury if that's what you want but it's not making that who I am because it's just part of this life that I get to experience and again I lost everything through that breakup so that was a whole other trauma I went through a couple right. of months later when I realized okay all my stuff is not coming back and I would never have been the most materialistic person but my god when everything was taken from me I yeah. felt so vulnerable so exposed I felt like people would judge me constantly if I was wearing the same thing I didn't have the money to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe so it was a whole like Oh my God. Really starting from scratch. Yeah. But then again, I had the realization, I'm like, hang on. If someone wishes to not be my friend or judge me or speak ill about me because I'm wearing the same top again, if we're going out or doing something, I'm like, that's on them because it has nothing to do with me. It's about what I carry within and who I am within. And it's not about the externals. Again, they're here for our enjoyment, but once we start making them part of our identity and making our life about them again that's not the true living because we can't bring any of it with us you know at the end of the day I'm like cannot bring anything with me you know it's only what did Maya Angelou say it's not what you say and it's not what you do it's how you made people feel that people remember you know and that's the important thing is and that's so true you know when you think about if somebody just mentions a name, somebody's name, it, it brings in feelings of, mm-hmm. you know, um, was it, were they a good friend? Was it somebody yeah. I liked? Was it somebody that I knew talked bad about me? Like anytime you hear someone's name, that's why people have the worst time picking out baby names. Yeah. <laughs> because it was like, no, we are not doing the Tasha. The I knew a girl named Tasha. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's oh, true. That's so fascinating. Yeah. I listened to your episode with Bob Doyle and Mm. I love that stuff, neuroplasticity and just how, uh, you know, what you experience on the inside is what happens then on the outside. Like that is so mind blowing. And I know for some people, they might just be like, that is too woo woo for me. But if you really delve into it and read about it, it is fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the realization I've come to as well. And this is why I call myself an inside out coach, because it's an inside out world that we live. And again, we're not taught this. But What we are putting our consciousness on, what we are thinking about, what we are speaking about internally, even if we're not aware about it, what we believe, what we hold within 
is what we will experience in our reality. And that's why quantum physics as well is like, you know, the new science. But it's it's not just woo-woo. It's actually science and like that neuroscience and neuroplasticity. And it is this power that we hold to actually create anything we want. And I believe that's why everything exists. That's why there's war. That's why there's really horrible situations because we are creators and we've been given the gift of creation and creation will say yes to whatever we are thinking, believing, carrying within, whatever we feel might happen. And that's why when you know, and it seems counterintuitive because if we're dealing with an issue, whether in career or love or finances, we keep our focus on it because we're like, oh, my God, how am I going to get more money? For example, if I'm not thinking about money and where I'm going to get it and what's going to happen and how I'm going to make this happen. Whereas by keeping ourselves in the problem of having a scarcity of money or whatever it is, I'm just taking this as an example we're keeping our consciousness on it and we are creating more of the same. So what do we do instead? It's not about denial. We feel and we are aware of what our truth is, but then we put our consciousness, we put our focus, our attention, our energy on what we do want. And that's the really important part. And we keep our energy there and we don't worry about the how. Because the how will unfold, the how will reveal itself. That is the co-creative part with the universe. But we keep our energy there. And again, when we think about the lack or the problem again, again, we feel, feel into it, allow it, don't suppress it, like acknowledge it and be like, oh my God, yeah, this is really crap. But then it's like, <laughs> but I need to change this. I'm not never going to change it by staying in the crap. Like if nothing changes, nothing changes. So you know, and that's, again, that's quantum physics, that's science. Yeah. And yeah. Is it positive thinking then? Is that all? I mean, I, I don't want it to come across as fake it to make it, but like, yeah. it, without going to a mentality of lack, how yeah. do you get yourself to the point where you're like, I have zero dollars in my bank. <laughs> I owe everyone money. Like, I am freaking out. <laughs> yeah. How do you get to the, how do you get from A to B? or A to C, yeah. you know, what's, what's in between there. Yeah. And it's not about fake it to make it, but it's also the truth of, cause you know, when I was saying or starting affirmations and saying new things to myself, they never felt true. Like I never believed them. And the believing is not part of it initially. We don't have to believe it. Okay. I believe anyway, because what is a belief? A belief is a thought that we have thought so many times that it's automatically programmed into our subconscious mind as a belief. It is something that we hold true. It's just there. It's programmed. It's a neural pathway. We don't even have to consciously think about it anymore because it, because it is wired into us. So we never believe anything straight off when it's something new. Because again, our brain always likes to keep us in what's familiar. And what's familiar is what is quote unquote true for us at the moment. So anytime we're trying to change anything we will never believe it straight off but that's okay we don't have to believe it and I, I know for me that made a massive difference because I'm like oh yes a belief does take time to wire in it does take time to shift but we persist anyway so it's and the part of it is and it gets intuitive but the part is getting something that still feels good for you even if you don't believe it so Again, going with the theme of the example of money and like that, you're down to like your last $5 or whatever, and you're freaking out. Again, feel the freak out. Honor your feelings. Don't deny it. Don't try to fool yourself. But then realize that your power is as a creator and you want to create something new. So start saying something that I am always supported or I know somewhere, somehow something is going to happen. Something is going to shift. You don't instantly have to start thinking, I'm a multimillionaire. I never have money problems because right. that might be a bit too much of a jump. And I'm not saying it's not possible. If you can do that and get behind it, go for it. You know, we don't have to do it in steps and find something that makes us feel a bit more good. But it is important that we can, even though we don't believe it, 
we can get our energy and our focus and attention behind it and we can roll with it because again we have to program it in we can't just say it once and be like okay where's the miracle where is this going to come out where's it going to come out of because again once we start looking for it again we have taken ourselves out of our creative power because we're back in lack because yeah. if we are looking for oh my god where's it showing up where's it showing up is it in my account yet you're believing that it's not possible for you you're back in the lack so you're creating more of the same. So that's why it's when you feel an emotion or a fear or a panic, allow it, but then you change your story and you stick with it. And you're like, no, I don't care. Some way, somehow, this is all working out for me. Things always work out for me. This always happens. I feel I'm always supported by money, no matter what. And we keep programming that. And Neville Goddard, Neville Goddard is one of my favorite teachers as well. Mm-hmm. And he talks about living in the end. So if a miracle had happened, if a random 5,000, 1,000, 500, 10,000, whatever showed up in your account, how would you feel? You'd feel more relaxed. You wouldn't be worrying about the lack anymore. So it's moving into that feeling of this is done. This is done. This is done. This is done. And you live and trust in that. And again, something will show up because there's always a million and one possibilities. But again, in our thinking that we think oh no I have to know how it's going to happen and I used to be really bad at that I thought I I needed to know the how or if I wasn't working on the how it was never going to happen whereas it's moving into that other consciousness into the unseen at the moment it's putting your consciousness your focus your energy there and something will happen something will come about and what that could be we don't know there could be a random check in the post there could be an inheritance that comes out of nowhere there could be a job offer that just shows up like we literally do not know and we don't have to know we just wait for that spark and then we follow that action Mm. well like you said everything you always it boils down to you having a choice so you can choose to stay in that negative mindset and think everything bad always happens to me I'm always broke everything's bad or start telling yourself no everything always turns out for me everything always is in my favor this is going to be working out yeah that's amazing and it's so funny even in my own life um one of the my dad always used to say he's passed away but he'd always say like I mean he gave me lots of bad programming as well I'm not going (laughs) to pretend like he was a saint um and again this is this is the thing and this was a part of the relationship issue as well he used to always tell me like oh don't depend on any man like you know make your own money so of course like I became overly independent and thought like no I don't need anyone and yeah doesn't help but (laughs) one of the things he did say that was positive that well in his mind that was positive as well um, but one of the things was that you can do anything you set, you set your mind to. So I always had this kind of belief and feeling that I can do anything. I can do anything. I can do anything. And again, it was a belief that I carried. And it's funny because so in so many situations, no matter what I did for the very first time, whether it was pottery or I remember before in my friend's florist making flower arrangements, whether it was painting, whatever it was, no matter if it was my first time, I always did really well. And even the people were like, wow, that's really good. It doesn't mean it was excellent. It doesn't mean it was incredible. But for a first time, they were like, Jeannie, that's really good for like first attempt. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's so interesting. I've never done this before. <laughs> Why was that? Because that was the belief that I carried that I can do anything. So no matter how it went, it was always like, wow, that was actually really good. So again, this is the power of our beliefs and what we hold subconsciously. Because again, we're just a system of programs and habits. And we're living out our beliefs all the time. They're in our subconscious. They're the autopilot. So if there's something that, you know, maybe we're not so happy with in our life, but or that's not going so well, it's because of a subconscious program that we carry within. That's why we have to start the inner work because we can change the external situation, whether it's a job, a career, a relationship, a house or whatever. But next thing, the same thing kind of shows up, the same patterns, you feel the same way because changing the external is like the end product. You have to go back to the internal thoughts that created the belief in the first place that set off the emotion that caused the behavior that 
then is the life that you live. So we have to rewind and go back. Yeah. And nobody wants to do that because it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I know. And this, this was part of my journey as well. I'm like, oh God, and I avoid it and I procrastinate. And I'm like, no, there has to be something else. Someone has something for me. There is a magic pill. There's a silver bullet. Something is going to happen that boom, I'm just going to feel amazing and all is different. And I've realized, no, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Yeah, it's me all the time. But also I flip my thinking. I'm like, wow, how powerful that actually it's all within me. You know, it's this old age old secret that we've all heard that everything lies within the power is within. And I'm like, wow, actually, how easy is it, even though it's it's it requires dedication and persistence and it feels messy and horrible and like you, you can't do it and you want to give up and you're going to turn back and just keep going what you're doing because it just feels awkward and uncomfortable and you don't want to be uncomfortable because again that's a pattern in our brain it likes to keep us in the familiar so even though it feels all of this I'm like wow but how easy and how incredible that I can change my thoughts to change my whole reality and right. program new beliefs. I actually don't need anything outside of me. I actually don't need to spend millions of pounds or whatever. I actually don't need to go to this special place or this special location. I can actually do it for myself within. So, yeah, that can seem overwhelming at times but also I'm like wow that's so magic <laughs> because yeah. I literally I don't have to leave my house I don't have to invest in loads of things and that's not to say we don't need support support is crucial at times but it's like wow that's so easy that I can actually do it myself but it requires me it requires my dedication it requires my commitment to myself because nobody else can do it for me Right. It's very empowering. It is when we, again, that was something I had to become accustomed to as well. Because at first it felt really overwhelming and like too much and like I wasn't able. Whereas now it's like, oh no, hang on. This is so empowering. And I still have my moments where I go down into negative spirals and I feel crap and I'm focusing on the lack and what's not working and all these kind of things. And I allow myself to have the moment and I'm like, okay, here I am. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, Okay, but again, it's all me. My life is working off me. So I can choose to stay in this shit feeling and feeling horrible. But I also know it's not going to help me. Nothing is going to change. Nobody's going to come save me. So yeah. I can stay like this forever. But truly, how does it make me feel? It makes me feel crap. I feel miserable. So it's like, okay, well then, what makes me feel good again? And it's that restart of, oh, yes, I have the power again to just change my focus think about something else. And I feel different. But again, for me, it was like the realization as well going, what? It's really that easy that I actually <laughs> just think about something else. And yes, it is that easy. But again, I could not go from straight thinking what I was thinking to thinking something else. Because again, my whole nervous system, everything was wired. It was just go, 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 go. I did not stop. So I had to learn more stillness so I could tune in more to myself so I could be aware more of what I was thinking and feeling to then change them. Just fascinating. I mean, it really mm -hmm. is just your body is completely in robot mode, yeah, doing what totally. it does every day because that's the way you've trained your, your brain and body mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, so which, you, which is amazing. You're like, wow, yeah. you know, yeah, it is. I, I can train myself and then this is automatic. And you're like, wow, if I could train myself to feel crap the whole time, surely I could train myself to feel good all the time. And I'm the person to say, yes, you absolutely can, because I've done it. I continue doing it every single day. I've come out the other side of all that internal crappiness. And that's not to say I don't have moments. I do have moments and I feel them. But then I come back to that inner feeling of feeling good and love and gratitude and joy and happy and ease and flow, because that's actually the innate truth of us. How do you feel about that ex-boyfriend? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's I funny. Mean, because that's some place where you would go there in your mind, like, oh, totally. really, jerk? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, again, like I said earlier, I absolutely don't agree with the way he did things. Yeah, in an but, email? <laughs> yeah, in an email. I know. But you know what? I actually have to say I am so grateful in, a, in, in another sense because I was that total fixer. 
I would have kept going back and going back and trying to fix it. So I'm actually, and maybe a part of him knew that and that's why he did the cold cutoff. Because I was like, oh my God, I could have caused so much more hurt and pain for myself. So although it was extremely traumatic, now I'm like, I'm actually grateful it was that way because me, who I was at that time, I would have kept going back. I would have kept going back. Because again, the story I was telling myself at the time was, even though I knew things had turned and I didn't feel so good in the relationship anymore. I kept telling myself, oh no, but things will come back to how they were. And what if I don't get another chance? Like, this is my chance. So I need to stay here and I need to work through it. And it's like, no, when it really starts affecting me, I need to be accountable accountable for me and remove myself from the situation. But I had too much fear. There was a fear story running my system at that time that I didn't do that, even though I knew deep down it's what I should have done. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's so many lessons and I don't, I definitely wouldn't change it. And like that, I have no ill feelings towards him because also I know hurt people hurt people. Right. We're so oblivious to what we're doing and the impact of others. And again, it's from our own upbringing and the environments and things that have been programmed into us. And I don't believe it is the truth of any single person I don't care what they do it is not the truth of them and I mean that in the sense of people who do the most horrific murders tortures abuse that's not the truth of any single person nobody is born that way nobody is born pure evil there is no baby in the world that comes in evil right so what happens it's from their environment. It's from who they needed to be to cope with life, with whatever was going on, with their culture, society. There's so many different elements. But again, that's not letting them off the hook, going, oh, yeah, so that's OK. No, that's the responsibility we have to ourselves, every single one of us, and to be accountable for ourselves. Because I don't agree with anyone going out hurting other people. I'm like, no, don't be such an an ass and right. fucking be accountable for yourself and heal yourself so you're not going around doing shit things to other people because right. nobody deserves that either but also again we're not taught that but that's why i believe anyone can change absolutely a million percent there is nobody who needs or must stay that way for their whole life but again it's only that person who can change everything and anything about themselves mm-hmm. do the inner work yeah Oh, um, so uh, putting you on the spot here, what was your favorite book? What's the, what's the book that's been the most impactful to you that you've read? Oh, God, so many. I mean, so many. But one of the first ones that really started this inner curiosity as well of the power of my thoughts was The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma. And I read it years and years and years ago. I mean, still when I had no practice. But that book there was a a part of that book where he he used the analogy of a garden and how our mind is like a garden and what we plant and what we water is what will grow and if we tend to our garden and you know pluck out the weeds we have this beautiful garden that we enjoy and other people enjoy as well or we can not tend to our garden we can have it be overrun with weeds do nothing about them and have it go into disrepair and kind of ickiness and he made that analogy to our mind the same with our thoughts we can have good thoughts and cultivate good thoughts because again they don't just come you know we are the ones behind our thinking so it's cultivating more empowering loving kind compassionate thoughts to ourselves to others or we can do nothing and even actually who was it oh it was another dr fred moss who joined me on his on my podcast and he's known as the undoctor and he used the analogy as well of like a flower literally like that and he was like if you do nothing with the flower if you don't tend to it and water it it will automatically go to kind of wilt and die and that's unfortunate and we're the exact same though he's like if we don't put intentionality behind our thoughts in our life we'll kind of go into that wilt and that victimness and that sense of life is against me and feeling horrible and negativity. That's like our default program. So Mm -hmm. it takes intentionality. And that book was the first time that I was really like, oh, wow, yes, 
my mind is like a garden. And yes, I can put good thoughts. And yes, if I don't do anything, I'll sit in this negativity and it'll get bigger. So something clicked within me then. But again, it didn't mean I started doing anything about it. I didn't. <laughs> Not for another while, but it was one of those moments I was like, wow, you know, something clicked within me and it was my time to roll with it. But again, I just didn't do anything. So when we don't do anything, nothing, nothing happens. happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't read that one. I will have to get that one. I've, I've heard of it. I just yeah. haven't read and that one. It's so simple and basic, but yeah, it just, and I mean, so many since, but that was like, boom, you know, something for me. Did you ever read Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now? Yes. That that was the one for me Several where times. he was suicidal and mm. having suicidal thoughts. And he said, I cannot live with myself, myself. any longer. Mm. Yeah. And then he said, who's saying that? Who's the I and who's the who's self? The, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, my yeah. mind was like, boom. <laughs> no. The first time I read that book, it's, I mean, I've read it a couple of times and now it's one of my favorites. But the first time I read it, it was a bit over my head, to be honest. I was a bit like, hmm what mm, present because yeah. this idea again of being present because I thought I was being present I thought I was present because it was whatever day I had to go to work I was doing this I was doing that whatever whereas now I can see actually I was very rarely present if at all because in my now moments as I was living my life I was always already 10 steps ahead of myself because I was actually a highly anxious person and again didn't even realize it, didn't even know it. I just thought this is the way you succeed. You just keep going and you keep pushing and you keep hustling and that's the only way. It felt normal to me. So when I first started reading about this concept of presence, I thought, well, of course I'm present. Like, well, that makes no sense. Whereas now I can see you go, no, I was never present because my body is always present. My body can only ever be in the now, but I was never connected to my body. I lived in my head and in my head, I was never in the moment. I was already thinking about what next and what do I have to do later? And what about next week or the weekend or whatever? So I was never present. Wow. Did you, did you end up having to find like a whole new set of friends or are, did your friends <laughs> kind of join you on this journey? Because yeah. I think if you're on a, a spiritual quest, basically, not everybody's on the same page or at the same yeah, level no. of consciousness. Yeah, no. And it's funny. I mean, I have so many friends across all different age groups and types. And I have my spiritual friends and I have my normal friends. And, you know, I, I have always been so fortunate that I have the most incredible people in my life. And even my friends from childhood that I grew up with, like, they're still my friends. And they're like, we all just kind of accept each other which is yeah, amazing that's and, what friends should be <laughs> yeah and you know what's funny this is why I, I retrained and I went into coaching as well because for a while and it's a wonder they still talk to me at times when I think <laughs> of this because I remember when I first started traveling as well I went backpacking after university because again I was like I have no idea what the hell I want to do but I don't want any of these careers so I was one of the only ones I went off backpacking <laughs> Actually, I, I moved to Mexico first, teaching English because I had studied Spanish. And again, that was an intuitive insight, because when I was looking at my the forms that we fill out for university, I was like, I have no idea what the hell I want to do. I was like, how the hell am I meant to know? Like, I kind of don't know anything about life. And yet I'm meant to pick a career and know what I want to do for the rest of my life. Again, it made no sense to me. So when I was looking at these forms, I was like, what the hell am I going to put on these? And next thing, this moment just dropped in. Um, this memory from the first time we went abroad uh, as a family on a foreign holiday, we went to Tenerife outside of Ireland. It was very exciting. Um, and I was <laughs> 10 or 11. So it was like, oh my God, first time in an airplane. It was just like, wow. Yeah. And I was always freezing in Ireland. I was always so cold. <laughs> And the, that was the first time I remember we were abroad in Tenerife. We were there for two weeks and I literally lived in my swimming togs for like two weeks. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm, this is amazing. I am so warm. I don't need loads of clothes like this is epic. And I remember one day I was lying by the pool with mom and I was like, hey, mom, what language do they speak here? And she was like Spanish. I was like, I'm going to learn Spanish. I never, ever, 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 ever thought of that moment again until I was looking at these forms of university and what I wanted to do. It dropped in. And this is the intuitive and knowing to trust and just go with it. I was like, oh, okay, Spanish, that's something. So I learned Spanish. 
And again, I'm so grateful because how my life is involved, I adore Spanish, like, and I love living in Mexico. So again, um, I forget what your question was. <laughs> I went off on a Me tangent. Me too. I love where you're going. I'm just like listening. <laughs> there, there was a reason to it, but yeah, um, that was, yeah, I don't I, remember the question. I should know. I should know. I just totally just listened. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, engaged. Um, well, yeah, life does just happen. We all like to think that we're in total control of how everything's going to pan out. But if we were just all more willing to kind of roll with it, maybe we wouldn't have as yeah. many obstacles. Yeah, no, we definitely do need to trust more. And like that, we have all intuition. We're born with it. It is our own internal GPS. And we get these nudges, these sparks, these feelings, these thoughts. It can come in in different ways for different people. And most of us, because we're taught to live by the logical, rational mind, we we cast it aside. We're like, mm, no, that's a bit crazy. No, like yeah. that makes no sense. But, you know, Again, I do believe it is that intentionality. I believe if we do just sit back, because again, we're the drivers in our life. If we just sit back and do nothing, nothing's going to happen. Like nothing's going to drop from the sky and save you. And we're like, here you go. Here's your silver platter. Because again, I tried that. I thought, yeah, this is law <laughs> of attraction. I just feel this way and it's all going to come to me. And it's no, it takes more than that. It takes our active involvement showing up following that inspired action when it shows up because it is again our gps is our own internal system but it's a faculty high way higher than our intellect we will never have the answers beforehand when we follow our intuition never ever ever it unfolds as we follow what's calling us and that's something i've learned as well it's like i can plan i can think i can execute i can think of a million different ways of how something's going to go and work it out and plan it out and think about it and execute it and all these kind of things. But I will still never, ever, ever, ever know how something is going to go until I'm taking action, until right. I'm actually moving in that direction. Because I can think, I can plan, I can have this idea, but I will never know for sure until I'm actually doing something about it. I love that. Ah, I want you to come on my show like every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do it. <laughs> I love it. so funny. Listening to the way that you say things, you're just very eloquent. But um, oh my so God. And you know what? This is another thing because so many people say that to me. And even my clients that I work with, they're like, oh my God, you just have these ways of describing things, whatever. And, you know, everyone, everyone automatically just assumes that's who I was and that's how I always was. Let me tell you, I was the most shut down, reserved person ever, ever, especially when it came to speaking about emotional topics and about all these different teachings and lessons that I was curious about. No, I could not speak about them in any way, shape or form. It kind of blows my mind as well of this language and this eloquence that flows through me. And I'm like, wow, God. And again, <laughs> this is why I'm like, I am the example of what is possible. I'm not particularly gifted. I'm not special. I wasn't given the golden spoon by creator, whatever. No, we all, every single one of us has this capacity, this power, this potential. But again, we have to do it for ourselves. Nobody can do it for us. And that's why I'm like the, the cheerleader, the other side, whenever I'm working with people, I'm like, no, you can. It's normal to feel crap. It's normal to want to stop. It's normal to like feel exhausted. It's normal to, for it to feel messy. Like that's healing. That's all of it. It's normal, but you just keep going anyway. And eventually your brain gets with the new program and it's like, oh, this is what we're doing now. Oh. But it will fight you to keep you in what's familiar because, again, that's the function of our brain to keep us in what's familiar, even if it's detrimental to us in the long run. Hmm. Well, can you promote yourself? Tell people wh where they can find you because you do a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my website is just KarenMaloney.com, my name. And there you'll find my Instagram and Inside Out Coach on Instagram and Facebook, Karen Maloney. And my podcast is Curiosity and Consciousness. And really, yeah, my work is just around 
coaching and it's really about helping people to learn the life skills and the tools to be their own coach in life because again this is also what I've realized I'm like that realization the breakup I'm like wow I'm with me 24 7 I've got me no matter who else or what else I have and I can make that a living hell or I can make that a paradise and that's my choice and that's the reality I choose to live and it's teaching people the skills and the tools to be able move through difficulties, emotionally self-regulate themselves, like debunk their thoughts and the shit that comes up. It's like none of it is true. It's actually not the truth of us, most of it. So, and we have the power to change it. So that's my role in teaching others to to be the same. Because again, we don't need to be dependent on anyone our whole life. We have everything we need. Yeah. The way out is to go within. Yes. I love it. I love (laughs) it. And thank you so very much. This was phenomenal. And I definitely am going to reach out to you again to have you on because I just think your message is so powerful and inspiring. Oh, thank you so much, Dawn. An absolute pleasure. And yes, I'd love to join anytime. Now I love talking about this crap. You can't shut me up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. uh, Now I remember what I was going to say about earlier. When I started, when you were asking about the friends, I was like, it's amazing they still talk to me at times because initially when I started traveling and learning these things I was like a raving lunatic to them going what the hell are you doing with your life oh my god there's so much more to do and see and here you are doing the same thing day in day out and I was like I could not understand it the first time I came back from backpacking I was like what the hell you're still doing the same thing Monday to Friday going the same I was like there's a whole world there's so new experiences and people and cultures and wow right and they just looked at me and they're like wow and I realized I was like Jesus I need to leave again for my sanity so I did and the more I came and went and came and went and then I was like actually who am I to comment on any other person's life I'm like each to their own if this makes a person happy go for it like so the more I came and went the more settled I became in myself and my truth and accepting of everyone else as well because I'm like hey everyone's on their journey as well yeah so we're still friends That was that was the thing we forgot earlier. Just dropped in. I know. I feel like the worst podcast host ever. You're like, no. what, was the, what was the question? I'm like, I have no idea. Stop. That's happened to me before as well. Because you're just so enthralled. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, totally forgot what the oh, original wait. question was. But it's all good. I was like, that was really interesting. So oh, yeah, it's happened to me. <laughs> thank you so much, Dawn. Oh, thank you. You have a great day, and I'll be in touch. Likewise. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Yo. Yeah. Yeah.